Hi guys, welcome to my channel Amy Howard Art. I'm Amy and today I'm going to show you how you can draw this horse in coloured pencil. So I'm just going to run through a few quick tips on what you can do to achieve a realistic horse drawing. So before I begin putting any colour down onto the horse, I've made sure that I've got a completely accurate outline. And this is something which I always say is a must before you start adding your colour, and that's because it's completely true. You need to make sure that you have a really accurate outline if you're wanting to portray realism to its fullest. So how you get that outline is completely up to you. Personally, I like to use the grid method, but you can freehand or you can trace your outline. Either way is completely fine. Once I've got that outline and I'm happy with it and the proportions are correct and it's looking like the outline of a horse, then I like to go in and start the eyes. So one of the main things to remember with horses is that they don't have completely round pupils like a lot of other animals. If you look at sheep and goats and those kinds of animals, you'll notice that the pupil is actually laying horizontally and it's more of a rectangular shape. And that's what you need to convey with horses as well. So when I'm doing the eyes, all I'm doing is using a really sharp dark sepia pencil to outline all of the dark parts around the eyes. So I'm going around the iris and the eyelids and the eyelashes and outlining all of that with the dark sepia pencil, making sure that I've got a really sharp point to do that. And I'm also going in and really lightly adding that pupil as well. Once I'm happy with the shape of all of those parts, I'm then going in and adding a really light layer of the dark sepia down just to sort of flesh out some darker areas. So in this case, it is mainly underneath the eye um, and around the iris, around the brown part of the iris in there. So once I'm happy with the shapes of all of those, then I go in with a few more layers and really darken those areas up. And once those areas are really nice and dark, then I can go in and start to add the mid-tones. So an important thing to remember is before you go in with your mid-tones and sometimes even before you go in with those dark colours is to make sure that you outline where the highlight is within the eye. And it's really important to make sure that you do add in the highlight properly and in the correct place because that's also going to add to the realism of the piece. So with the mid-tones for the eye, I went in with a really light layer of some buff titanium. I also added some burnt ochre 10%, some burnt sienna, some really nice rich browns and some really light browny yellow colours as well. And I just went in and worked from light to dark, so starting off with those burnt ochre colours and then working my way up to burnt sienna and using really light pressure on my pencil. And to limit the amount of pressure that I put through my pencil, I'm holding it quite far back towards the end. So I'm not holding it right towards the tip or the point of the pencil, I'm holding it quite far back and using it in that manner is just going to enable you to limit the amount of pressure that you actually put through your pencil and you're going to get some really nice smooth light layers. So I apply that process across the entire eye and then I start to work on the skin and the fur surrounding the eye. So on this reference photo the horse was a really nice chestnut colour but in some areas there was this really nice grey purpley tone and that's what this tone was around the eyes. So to do that I went in with some cold grey 4 and I just used a really sharp pencil and I used really small circular motions to try and convey the texture of the horse. So around the eyes and also this was the same kind of texture on the muzzle it's really kind of velvety and it's not really like fur, it's kind of almost like a velour. So for that kind of texture, all I did was made really small circular motions with my pencil to try and fill as much of the teeth of the paper as possible and to get it to look really nice and smooth. So I just went in with a cold grey four and then I layered some manganese violet and some blue violet on top. Now when I went in with those purple colours, I went in with a completely light hand. So I have barely put any pressure through the pencil at all and it's really important that you do that especially when you're working with unusual colours because otherwise if you go in with too hard a pressure you're going to end up with like a purple or a blue mess and it's going to look too dark and too saturated with the blue or the purple. So it's really important to make sure that you do go in with a really light hand when you're adding those types of tones. 
Once I'd added those down then I went through and burnished with the white pencil. So what I like to use for burnishing is the Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil and occasionally some of the buff titanium as well. And I like to use those pencils because it really knocks back the colour and enables you to just layer a little bit more and really build up the depth of tone of certain colours. So once I'd added the kind of base layers around that grey area around the eye then I went through and started to add some of the shadows. So for that I used some dark sepia and I also used some dark indigo as well. Again just to carry on that sort of blue purple theme throughout those grey areas on the horse's face. Once I'd added those areas then it was time to start that really lovely chestnut sort of apricot-y colour. And to start that I just added some layers of buff titanium and... Before I added this I made sure that I checked with my reference photo, I checked the direction that the fur and that the skin was going in. So you can see a real slight grain on the reference photo and I made sure that I made note of that and then added the very first base layer down in that direction. After that I then went through with a really light layer of the Caran d'Ache Luminance Apricot and again I treated this in exactly the same way as I did with those purple colours around the eye. So I went in with minimal pressure barely adding any kind of colour down to the paper and then after I'd added that layer then I went through with the white pencil and really blended it in with that base layer of the buff titanium. I also added some burnt ochre and some sanguine over the top and the sanguine was a really important pencil with this portrait so that enabled me to get these really rich tones and it also enabled me to get some of those shadows as well so it enabled me to get a real depth of the shadow just by layering the sanguine over and over. Completing the forelock and the mane of this horse were some of the most fun parts and this required a completely different technique to the actual skin and fur of the horse. So for the hair what I did was just basically use the buff titanium and I put that down as a base layer, again working in the direction of the mane. So this little clump that you've got next to the ear here I made sure that I looked at what direction that was going in according to the reference and then added my base layer of the buff titanium. Titanium. And then I went through and fleshed out some of my darker tones. So I used some burnt sienna and some dark sepia and some burnt umber to really flesh in those darker parts between the clumps of hair. And when I was drawing this part, I didn't think of it as individual strands of hair. I actually thought of it in terms of different clumps. So I identified where there were certain sections of the, f of the hair and then I added the dark areas in between those sections. And think of it of it in that way is a lot easier than thinking of it in individual strands. So once I had gone through and added all of the dark areas of the hair then I went through and started to add my mid-tones much like the rest of the portrait. So I started to build up some burnt ochre 10% and slowly building up to those darker tones once more. In this area I actually used a little bit of the Burnt Sienna 10% from the Caran d'Ache Luminance as well just to give the hair a really nice pink tone which was really showing through. So once I'd added a little bit more of the skin to the face then I started to work on the left hand ear and I applied exactly the same process for the ear as the rest of the portrait. So I went through before I added any layers down and I made sure that I knew which direction the fur and everything was flowing in and then I added that base layer down off the buff titanium and then I started to flush out some mid-tones and some of those dark areas as well. So some of the dark areas around the ears I just went in with a really sharp dark sepia pencil and again I added that purple, that manganese violet and that blue violet to those to really enhance those real dark shadowy areas. I then went through with some of the mid-tones so again I added some burnt ochre 10% and I also added a really light layer of the apricot once more and burnished out with that white pencil and then I went through with the sanguine and really gently and really slowly built that up. So I continued to use really light pressure and a sharp pencil just to enable me to build a real depth of colour throughout there. For some of the shadows within the ears I went through with some burnt sienna and some burnt umber as well. As I was working with a limited palette for this horse, when it comes to do that really pink area along the edge of the mane, I kind of had to make my own kind of pink colour here. And that consisted of layering some really light layers of some red, so I used a Pompeian red from the Polychromos, and I also layered some manganese violet and some blue violet on there. And then every now and then after 
after one or two layers I would use the white coloured pencil to really burnish and really sort of tone those out and I ended up with this really really nice pink colour and I think that just by layering those certain colours it really gave a nice effect and I don't think I would have got the same effect if I'd have used a straight coloured pencil from my pot. So by using this limited colour palette I was able to get this really nice tone which I then iterated through the entire horse portrait as well. So I added a lot of that pinky tone to the neck and also to the face as well. So moving on down the neck I just employed exactly the same technique as I did for the small section that I'd already completed on the face and I just noted the direction of the fur there was quite a few different fur direction changes on the neck here but I just added those down with the first layer of the buff titanium and then I built in my mid-tones slowly working up to those shadowy colours and for the shadow underneath the jaw I just went through and added a lot of the dark sepia the burnt umber a lot of that blue violet as well and then finally adding in some of the dark indigo in there and again by adding those different tones and those blues and those oranges and all of those colours together I got this really nice shadow tone. So for the forelock of the hair I used exactly the same technique as those small strands beside the ears. I just thought of this in terms of clumps rather than individual strands. So before I added any sort of shadows or any mid-tones down I just went through and identified where there were certain clumps and kind of the direction and everything that the hair was going in. And then I added in the darker shadow areas just like I did with that other piece of hair and then I slowly built in those mid-tones and again I added a lot of the burnt sienna 10% through here just to keep the pink tones running throughout the portrait. So my favourite part of this portrait was actually the nose and that's because it was a completely different texture again to the rest of the portrait. So you had the similar sort of texture as what we added around the eye. You had that really velvety kind of texture. It was not really fur but it's kind of like a little bit of a fuzz and trying to replicate that texture is completely different to trying to render the fur and the hair of the horse. So I had a lot of fun doing the nose on this portrait. Again, the nose contained a lot of those grey tones and for those grey tones, all I did was just went through with a cold grey foil pencil, really, really light layers and really building them on top of one another to get some more of the darker grey tones. And then adding in some of the manganese violet and the blue violet and a little bit of the dark indigo as well. So the nose of the horse was actually quite blue in tone so I ended up adding quite a lot of the dark indigo and quite a lot of the blue violet, especially around the open nostril which you can see on the horse. For the really dark areas, I didn't use any black or anything on this portrait, it's purely just multiple layers of dark sepia, just making sure that you're using a really sharp pencil to really add that down and you end up with this really nice tone. And then finally going over the top of some of those areas with the dark indigo, again just deepening those dark tones, adding that real depth of shadow. The nose contained a lot of these really small lines and a lot of creases so you really have to pay attention to where the shadows and where the lights are falling according to the reference photo. And if you're not working from a reference photo when drawing a horse I really recommend using a reference photo especially for the nose because using that reference photo you can really kind of understand how the light is playing on the subject. So you can understand how the light falls around the nostrils and how all these wrinkles sort of form on the nose of the horse as well. So for those really fine lines and those wrinkles all I did was went round with a burnt umber and a dark sepia pencil and just added in some really really fine lines making sure that that pencil was extremely sharp and it just enabled me to get these really fine lines and it really enhanced the details within the nose. Finally to complete this portrait all I did was used a really sharp Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil and I added in those really coarse really short kind of whiskers that were sitting on the horse's nose. So this might take a little bit of effort with your white pencil and it's completely fine to use like a gel pen or any kind of opaque white that's going to go over your coloured pencil if you're having trouble using a coloured 
white pencil. But I just used the Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil, made sure it was really sharp and just went over a couple times just to really kind of get that white tone down over the top of all of those dark colours. It's a lot easier to add white tones like whiskers and really fine lines like this over dark areas when you have gone through and you've layered really lightly. By using a light hand you're keeping the tooth of the paper open for more layers of colour so your white coloured pencil is going to more easily lay down over those dark areas. So you really want to make sure that throughout your portraits that you do use extremely light pressure and you just have the patience to build your colours and to build your layers. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I really enjoyed drawing this horse and I really love the vibrancy of the chestnut colour and I think that adding all of those purple and pink tones, it really enhances that chestnut colour and I'm really pleased with the overall outcome of this piece. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and if you want to follow along and complete your own horse using this short version then I've listed the reference that I've used for this in the description below. But if you want to follow along with me in real time going through it exactly step by step then I have this full six hour tutorial available over on my Patreon page as well as listed on my website as well. So if you want to follow along in real time then go and check out my Patreon page and my website and I've listed both of those in the description below below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and I'd love to hear what you guys would like to see me draw on my channel in the future. So pop your suggestions in the comments below because I'm always interested to know what you guys would like to see as tutorials. If you're new around here and you like this video and you want to see more along with art advice and live streams, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and tick that bell icon as well to be notified of all of my future videos. And I've listed some more videos videos which I think you're really going to enjoy just over there and I will see you in my next video. Bye!